We are creating a stat-heavy tower defense game, and it is finally coming to life. Yeah, but where are the stats? What? Where are the stats? Hmm, right. Hello guys, this is Rago speaking, bringing you another exciting episode of our game devlog series. Up to this point, only I, as the developer, knew what stats towers have and how they change during gameplay. And even for me, it was overwhelming to keep up with all the stats. I had to rely on the Unity editor and debug statements to test and play. But now, let me introduce to you the advanced stats panel. The advanced stats panel shows all the relevant stats the tower has and helps you plan and strategize better when playing the game. Just click on this general area in the tower HUD, and you can see the base stats, bonuses, and resulting calculated stats in one place. You can also check the tower rarity, level, and remaining available upgrades. You can even minimize and close the panel. More on that later. We're also considering the addition of tooltips for each stat. This way, when you hover over a stat, you'll be able to see how it's calculated. You might start off with a base value, but with items, runes, leveling up, and upgrades, these values will change. It will be beneficial to understand what contributes to these changes. But for now, look at all those stats. You've got base damage, bonus damage, percentage bonus damage, added damage, percentage added damage, and the overall damage. Uh, told you this was a stat-heavy game. Let's talk a bit about the technical stuff. Unity keeps creating UI systems for some reason. Most of the game UI in the project is done using the old Unity UI system. Since when we started, the UI toolkit was not mature enough to use in production. Also, its name kept changing, and it was hard to find tutorials about it. But I put my mind to it and started creating the UXML and USS documents based on the design we have. But this is only the design. In Unity, we need to give it actual functionality and bind it to actual tower stats. As I started hard coding the bindings, I realized that there might be a better way, a future-proof way. So I scrapped it. After a few iterations, I came up with a modular solution that allows me to set up the bindings from the editor. You might say, Ragos, why are you telling us this? Why would we care? Well, you should care because now I can reuse the newly created system for different panels. Enemy stats panel, easy. Tech mage stat panel, piece of cake. Flying car stat panel in one of your game mods? Sure, why not? I created modular and reusable components that allow you to bind game elements to the UI. So this will tremendously help with the game kit that will be available to modders in the future. And while I was at it, I also added components to bind tower name, images, colors, and colors based on traits and more. So now, when displaying the tower name, I get the tower rarity from the rarity trait, which has a color property, and use that color to change the tower font color in the UI. And while I was down the rabbit hole of exploring what else I can do with the new UI toolkit, I added components that allow you to minimize, close, and drag UI panels in general. You just drag this draggable component onto any UI document, and voila you get a draggable window. Nice. I wanted to add the resizing functionality as well. When I realized that I have a tower defense game to finish and an entire community that is waiting for updates, which brings me to my next point. You might've noticed the outdated project milestones in our Discord server. Well, this part of the video will address our game development history and the roadmap ahead. Dofa and I started this project in mid-2020. We wanted to take the project seriously, so I quit my job and started my full-time game development journey. We aspired to create a community-driven tower defense game and give players the freedom to create their own mods. Otherwise, we would be creating just another tower defense game. In the early stages, we asked the community for their opinions and had polls on our Discord server, where we asked what the community wanted to see in terms of the game's visual setting, the namings, and other stuff. We worked with individuals in the community to get the project off the ground. We asked for assistance from our friends and community members on topics that weren't our strong suit. After a while, the project goal and scope were clear. 
We reached some milestones, but not all. We had to decide whether to reduce the project scope or carry on regardless, understanding that it will take more time than anticipated, given our small team and limited funding. Now, this is where projects die or power through until release and see the light of day. An overwhelming majority of indie games are never released. It's a problem that plagues the indie dev community to this day. And yes, our project shares some of the traits of abandoned projects, such as overambitious goals, large scope, feature creep, lack of funding, etc. But it also shares traits of projects that have been successful. We have a great community, a clear vision, a dedicated team, innovative concepts, and the ability to adapt. In the end, no one can predict the future. All we can say as the UTD team is that, barring a zombie apocalypse, we will work tirelessly to release the game to the best of our abilities and available resources. So, what's next? There are some features we want to include in the demo that still need some work to be finalized. We want to add a creep targeting mechanic where towers can choose what to hit. Lowest health creep, farthest creep, nearest creep, or a specific creep that the player selects. We want to finalize the runes consumables auto-equip UI panel. Stay tuned, next video will be about this. We want to finalize the implementation of the towers that are going to be in the demo. I am pretty sure you are bored with seeing the Metal Defender in the videos. We want to finalize the dynamic map changes based on research level. We want to finalize the game's look and have a visual polish. I will do some thorough testing before moving on to the next step, which will be community alpha testing, where select members of the community will help test the game to iron out bugs. After which we will begin the release phase. We will set up a Kickstarter page and a Steam page and have a demo release available to download and play. After a successful demo launch, we will continue adding the rest of the towers, elements, armor types, and remaining features of the game. Stay tuned. Real voice reveal at 1,000 likes.